So let's talk about the wisdom in the nervous system, uh, the larger wisdom, the pre-conscious, pre-personal wisdom of the nervous system. Um, let's talk about the inheritance of our interoceptive apparatus um, in the form of the insula, which is uh, one crucial structure when it comes to interoception and, as it turns out, time perception. Um, so if you were, to take, you were to take a brain, and if I were to take this yellow temporal lobe and peel it down a little bit along this line, and then take this, uh, these two upper lobes here and peel them away, I would reveal a surface that looks kind of like the cortex, um, but is deeper. And we call that the insula, the island, uh, uh, kind of tucked in underneath the temporal and parietal frontal lobes. And the insula uh, has a fascinating way of encoding the sort of salience, the motivation, the context, um, uh, the inter and ex the extra and interoceptive sort of meeting and informing all these higher levels of cognition. So the insula is really inter is really discussing things with. Uh, all of the cortical regions of the brain and, and assigning things with salience, emotional valence, empathy. And so it's this mid-level cognition, which is highly relevant to anyone looking to use their own consciousness to kind of modulate what you're feeling. And when it comes to the insula, it turns out that there's a flow of information in the insula that runs from posterior to anterior that goes from processing the, the non-personal to increasingly personalizing the information by the time you get to the, the anterior. And so the, the flow looks like this. Um, what you call interoception is happening here at the top of the insula. And the inputs are like viscera and taste and pain and, and or what we call nociception, uh, temperature, uh, certain parts of, of audition, as a sense of hearing, vestibular information. Um, and then there's a, there's a region of sensory motor integration. And then a flow um, that interfaces all this stuff with proprioceptive information, with motivational context, uh, and with emotional, social, relational, cognitive context. So that by the time you get to the end of this flow, your brain knows what kind of situation it's in and what kind of stress hormones it should, it should dump. Uh, it, your brain knows what it should be focusing on um, perceptually. Your brain knows how to update the narrative of self uh, and, and, and how to sort of widen or narrow the, the, the perceptual lens in the moment. And so the insula is doing all of this for us many times a second. Uh, and because this is a flow, because it's a wave that travels in succession, we don't have a continuous processing of time in the brain. This is one key place where time is processed. We have kind of a frame rate, a breathable frame rate. Let's call it 20 times a second, let's say. Uh, you, you are making a new guess as to what's transpiring. And that successive experience of time where you, you might imagine a series of cells and you are the present self, but your brain is anticipating the future frames and is still making sense of the residue of, of previous frames. Hmm. Um, but of course, in reality, we don't have a regular metrical march of these frames of self. We have a breathing, meandering. So we have compressions of self and, and, and expansions of self in time that has to do with the saliency of our experience. So when highly salient moments occur, the, the, the global emotional moments increases during a period of metrical time. And then the subjective time passage is, is greater. It feels like some moments 
this night could last forever. That's Billy Joel experiencing a dense succession of emotionally salient experiences. And, and this is from Bud Craig in 2009. And how this relates to the insula is that the insula is actually like kind of creating a silkscreen layering of different kinds of information on the body map. That's really cool. So we have this primary interoception and then this kind of like homeostatic motor function, like our, how are we doing in relation to our equilibrium? Then we, then we sort of like in, assess our environment. Like I'm underwater, I could use a breath of air. And then you get, <clears throat> you look at yeah. your environment, you're like, I'm underwater, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, and your hedonic conditions, I'm underwater and I don't like it. <laughs> Um, yeah. And then you're like, I'm underwater. Or as it's like, I need a breath of air. I'm underwater. I don't like it. And I wish to swim up, you know. And by the time you get to the end of this flow, your insula has output uh, a, a very adaptive thing, which is a, a self that seeks its own equilibrium, a self that seeks to evolve and, 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 uh, and nourish itself. Um, but it's not instantaneous. That flow is is happening in in kind of a series of moments, and those and this, at least according to Bud Craig, is what accounts for the stretchiness of subjective time 